Good morning. I have a little speech ready. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, we rise. We are rising, ladies. Welcome to the first WI Win Committee event. Win stands for Women in the NAACP. Win was started in 2004 in Philadelphia. It was started because they wanted to enhance the leadership in women, and we all know power is in the woman. Uh, their national theme is outstretched hands and open hearts to women and children. And our theme today is women empowerment. Empowerment. Think about that for a minute. Women empowerment. Most people think that power is something given. Power is not something you give. Power is something you take. And we are seeing that now all over the country with women coming forward and running from these positions, and they are kicking butt. <laughs> they are taking power in their own hands, and they are going out, out for what they believe in. And today, we have a nice program planned for you today. We have a dynamite speaker. But right now, I'm going to introduce you to the chair of the WIND Committee. She's a young, intelligent, innovative, smart woman, and she's going to come up here and tell us more about the WIND Committee and more about our program today. Please welcome Courtney Henderson. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, I would like to introduce myself for those I have not had the pleasure to pleasure to meet yet. Uh, my name is Courtney Henderson and I am the chair of the new women in the NAACP committee with the Brockton, NAACP, uh, Brockton area branch of the NAACP. Second, I would like to thank you all for coming out and supporting our very first event. The purpose of this women empowerment seminar is to introduce the committee to the community and have an open discussion about issues that women face daily. Um, whether it be economically, socially, um, and politically and physically, um, and to figure out the routes that we can take as individuals and as a collective to beat the inequalities and empower one another along the way. Um, as Phyllis has already mentioned, uh, she took a little bit out of my uh, speech, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't wanna repeat, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, so uh, like she said, the WIN Committee was uh, formed at the Philadelphia National Convention, and the purpose of the committee was to enhance the leadership role of women um, to serve as an advocacy vehicle um, for social, economic, political, educational, and health and welfare issues affecting women, girls, and children. Continuing in the purpose of this committee, the women of the Brockton Area Branch and I have put together workshops to enhance and strengthen the skills of women <clears throat> in our community. Next month, we are working on bringing a domestic violence workshop and um, offering self-defense classes with the Brockton um, police. So I hope to see you all there and bring your friends. <clears throat> um, we are also planning workshops that focus on political advocacy and education, just to name a few. One of the largest projects that I'm actually very excited about um, is our Miss Brockton Area NAACP uh, scholarship pageant. This pageant is open to college women who attend UMass Dartmouth, Stonehill College, Bridgewater State University, and Massasoit uh, Community College. Um, this purpose, the purpose of this scholarship is to highlight the wonderful young ladies that lead by example and continuously pour back into their community. Um, this is to provide a scholarship to a deserving woman to continue her academic goals. <clears throat> um, I wanted to take this time to um, introduce, well, it's actually one of our members here, um, a part of the WIN Committee who is here today. Um, she is uh, a lovely lady that has dedicated her time and efforts to this committee and has helped tremendously on planning our calendar and brainstorming our, um, on ways that we can better serve our women. Um, so I know you're recording, but I took this time <laughs> just because I wanted to highlight all the wonderful ladies in the committee. So um, if you wanted to say anything before we open up the floor, um, oh, just to talk about like uh, what you where you see the the committee going and um, if you. Where do I see the committee going? <laughs> um, I just am very. Yes, come on. Thank you. So I just am very excited about the fact that we've been able to form this committee. 
Um, I see that there's lots of potential to do great things in our community. Um, I could think of, or I could tell you 25 different <laughs> reasons why I think we're needed. But I would say the first thing is just, you know, the whole empowerment piece for women in the community, because I feel like in these times, especially as you've seen what's been going on in the country, we just really need to have our voices heard. Um, we need to come together. We need to support each other because so many times, and you probably would agree, women tend to tear each other apart. We need to bring each other together. We need to stick together. We need to fight for each other. We need to support each other. We just need to be one cohesive group. And I don't care what you look like, where you, what your background is or anything, but we as women need to stand tall and we need to be a voice in the community. So I'm just excited that we've been able to pull this group together. I see us doing great things. Um, and I just hope that you and other people, other women that you know, you'll pull them in and tell them that they need to be a part of this, they need to get involved, they need to be engaged, um, and they won't be sorry that they did because we've got a lot of stuff coming down the pike and we'd like you all to be a part of it. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I wanted to take this moment um, to kind of see where and what type of workshops you were looking to have, um, would you, you would like for us to host, because this is about you guys. This is what um, we want to, we want to cater to the needs and wants that uh, as the women of Brockton, the Brockton area want. So I just wanted to take the moment um, to answer any questions that you may have about the committee and to also hear feedback about what you guys would like um, when to do in the future. Is there any questions? Yes. Not so much a question, yeah, sure. Is there any um, plans to kind of educate the community on mental health at all? Absolutely. That is something that I'm very passionate about. Um, we're actually working on a mental health um, awareness program that's in May, which is the National Mental Health Awareness Month. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I know that you're into that, that field. So we may be needing your help for that. And, some, some advice that you may have for that. Right, yes, what she said. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are doing that, so be on the lookout for that. Any other questions or feedback? Yes. You know, what, one of the other things, and I, I you know, don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'm an HR professional, and one of the things that I see in the work that I do is that um, a lot of women are, they're stagnant in their jobs mm -hmm. and they don't quite know how to, to navigate the system to move up or to get promoted mm -hmm. up and you know that kind of thing. So I would like to see us do some work around um, helping women get promoted or just to advance in your career and how do you do that? What are some strategies to get to Absolutely. from one place to another, mm -hmm. and I, I think we really should incorporate some of those kind of workshops. I like that a lot. That, that, that's definitely needed. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was going to say also with everything that we are doing in our work and our field mm -hmm. and mothers, you know, wives, whatever your role may be, mm -hmm. self-care is really important. That is so important. You, can, you know, see things like that that's helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. We do need to take care of ourselves because we're so busy taking care of others, our children, our husbands, and the household that we don't actually have the time to take care of ourselves. So I, I like that idea. So HR moving up and self-care, mental health, these are all good things. Anything else? Yes. be interested in? Absolutely. Nice. Are you a member with us?
Don't don't you love her? <laughs> Nice. This is lovely. I love this. We need more members. I, I, we are definitely looking to um, increase the numbers um, in our WIN committee. And I'm always looking for new help in just different areas and different talents because we all can offer and contribute something different. And I know that we have great ladies on the committee already, but we are always looking for, for more. It's, yes, of course. Sure. Yes, the email. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, please. Um, so if you have not put your email or phone number on the sign-in sheet, I would recommend doing that, just so I can keep you guys in the loop. Um, and also reach out, and you guys, I'll give you my contact information as well if you guys are looking to do collaborative work or have any other questions about the WIN committee. And of course, our president is here. You can get, uh, grab her information as well, so she can also give you um, information about the other uh, committees that we have and what we're doing. I saw another hand, but I don't know if it was. Okay, oh yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So like a mentorship type of thing? I love that. Um, I actually wanted to start a mentorship a while ago, but um, now that I'm a part of the WIN committee and the chair, um, I would love to incorporate that because that's one of our, the, the missions for the WIN committee is to um, reach young ladies and, and teenagers and, and children, and I would like to incorporate that. I was, right now we don't have a workshop for that, but I will definitely be brainstorming and bringing that, definitely. Okay, anything else? I don't wanna like skip over anyone. <laughs> okay, so, oh yes, no, you're fine. I was just gonna say, going along, um, in line with every, what everyone else is saying, mm -hmm. I think also like entrepreneurship, because as we know, like women are like one of the leading um, group of entrepreneurs in the world. They are. Um, so I think that's something that like, we should be looking at. These are all great ideas. You guys should all just join the committee. <laughs> Everyone just sign up. Those like, applications are right over there. <laughs> I love it. I love this. This is going well. Um, so that, with that being said, um, I guess we can move on to our, our seminar part. Are you ready? Yes. OK. So we're going to introduce the speaker, Ms. Leona. So when I was talking to Taisha as she came in, I said, you know, I'm going to be introducing you. I have your bio. I'll read that. And she was like, oh, no, you don't have to do all that. <laughs> but with an impressive background like you have, I kind of want to read it all, if that's OK with you. <laughs> OK, so Taisha Creighton, uh, principal of Nodiark, is it? Management Group business and project management consulting firm. Taisha Creighton has developed a reputable reputation as a thought leader and the woman who gets it done. I like that. Taisha's goal is her client's goal. She believes in creating synergy amongst the stakeholders in order to fulfill the overall company vision. Taisha's 20 plus years of expertise in construction management Business process improvement, program management makes her a great asset and trusted advisor to her clients. Prior to transitioning to her own consulting firm, Taisha was the deputy director of the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, uh, their contract certification office. In this capacity, Taisha managed the operations of the certification office ensuring the Commonwealth of Massachusetts had experienced and responsible companies certified to perform work on vertical public construction projects. Taisha was also the founder and CEO of a multi-million dollar certified minority and women-owned construction business. 
Taisha specialized in providing modern construction solutions in particular, REO, which stands for Real Estate Owned Properties. For seven years, Taisha managed small to large scale projects on both vacant and tenant occupied properties on behalf of federal agencies such as Fannie Mae, bank lenders, and real estate agents. Taisha started the company after losing her six-figure job. With only $21, she strategically used her skills and experiences to develop the company to gross over $2 million. I want to hang with her. <laughs> In her quest to inspire women, Taisha released her first book, entitled Build Your Own Way in December of 2017. In Build Your Own Way, Taisha shares valuable lessons and powerful tools to help readers demolish barriers and create an authentic path to success. Taisha graduated with a degree in Management Information Systems from Northeastern University. She also studied at Dartmouth College uh, Tuck Business School and received a certificate in building a high performance minority business. Taisha is alumnus of the Minority and Women Business Programs of Suffolk Construction, Turner Construction, Gilbain Construction, and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Taisha has achieved high levels of success as a trailblazer in project, manage product management, program leadership, and as a minority and woman-owned business enterprise. Without further ado, Taisha Creighton. Um, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you to Ms. Courtney, who did a fabulous job just now. Um, let's give her a round of applause. Yes. I love seeing young ladies doing great things in our community. Um, and Ms. Phyllis, thank you so much for having me. Ms. Madam President of the Brockton mm -hmm. Chapter, thank you so much. Um, so I am Taisha Creighton, as you heard from that long bio. Um, <laughs> the bio does give you um, the highlights, if you will, of who I am. It gives you the highlights of a black woman who would appear to be successful, right? Um, but I want to also share with you a young girl who grew up in Dorchester, a young girl who was birthed um, by a teenager at the age of 16 years old in the projects of Columbia Point, which some of you are probably too young to even know what that is. Um, but Columbia Point was the projects in Dorchester. I think it's called Harbor Point now because yes. it's moved on up to condos. Um, but it was called Harbor Point, I mean, excuse me, Columbia Point at that time. So I was birthed to, to a single mother <coughs> at the age of 16. She had me, oldest of four children. My mother couldn't teach me much about education, entrepreneurship, policy, government. Um, but the one thing she did tell me was that I can do anything. She said, you can do anything. And as much as I wanted to believe her, my surroundings told me the opposite. Have you ever been in a situation that what you were told is different than what you see? What you were told that you can be a black woman and still be educated and still break or demolish the glass ceiling that sets above us? But everything you see around you tells you different. Every time you walk out of your home, it looks different than what we're stating to you. And we have all of these great ideas. We have all these great, this great hope. But what we see does not match up with what we're told. See, my mother said, you can be anything, you can do anything. But when I sat in the home of dysfunction, and I sat in the home of abuse and physical and mental abuse and watched her go through that, I didn't feel like I could do anything. Because she was my example of what a black woman could be. As a mother, you are the example, the first example. I'm a mother, I have three children, and I realized when I had my daughter, I followed the footsteps of my mother. 
I was falling into the trap of not what she was telling me, but what she showed me. The example that although she wanted to do better, she didn't know better. She only knew that she didn't want that for her daughter. And as when I had my daughter, I was in a mentally and physically abusive relationship. I didn't understand the value of being a black woman because I didn't see the value of being a black woman. I was <coughs> unable to teach my daughter what it was to be a black woman unless I made a sacrifice. I remember my daughter pulling the covers at the age of three over me and wiping my tears. And it was in that moment when I looked in her face and saw the pain and hurt in her eyes of seeing her mother in pain and seeing her mother lie there after being in physical and mental abuse that I made a decision. See, I don't know about you, but life is, I know that life is about choices. And it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how you start. It doesn't matter who said you can't do it, who said you won't do it. You can, but the choice is yours. I made a decision with looking in my daughter's eyes at three years old that I was not, I'll tell you what I said, it will be over my dead body if I allowed my daughter to grow up and go through the same situation because she wasn't going to listen to me say, you can do anything, you can be anything, and I show her the absolute opposite of that. I had to be her strength. I had to be the powerful woman for her. And power does not mean that you don't lack struggle. Power does not mean that you're not gonna have challenges in life. Power does not mean you're not gonna have disruptions or distractions, or you're not gonna lose every now and then. Power is simply just getting back up when you fall. Power is simply just knowing that, yes, I messed up yesterday. No, I can't pay that bill today. No, I didn't get the education I should have got when I was graduating high school. But guess what? I went back and got my degree. I didn't let it stop me. Power is about getting back up. And you know what else power is? Your voice. Using your voice to say, this is not going to be for me. This is not going to be for the people in my community. This is not going to be for the people that I know and I love. No more. Will I be a statistic? No more will I be able to go, or no more will I go out and still be the same as what I see in my environment. I had to break the circle of that dysfunction. And some of you in here today, ladies, you're going to have to do the same thing. You're going to have to realize that the way I grew up is not how I want to continue my life. What I see before me is not who I, I'm going to become. I'm going to be the change that I seek. I'm, I seek change in mental illness. I'm going to be that change. I'm going to be that voice for the people who can't speak up for themselves. I'm going to be the voice for the voiceless. The people that want to build business, businesses because we understand that economic disparity is real. We understand that institutional racism is real. We understand that people are not going to always give us an opportunity because we have letters behind our names. We understand that they see our color and our gender before they see our experiences. We get that. But the thing is, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to allow it to happen? I can tell you, having your voice is powerful because it allows you to, one, I'll tell you, November 6th, what are you supposed to be doing? Voting. Voting. Vote. Right. Voting is power. That's your voice. When you circle or darken in that oval circle, that's your voice. And when people and politicians are not doing, or people that we have elected in office, whether I circled your name or not, if you're in the office, then I have a right to come to your office and find out what you're doing about the problems and challenges that I'm having, that my community's having, that the people that look like me are having. That's your voice. We have to be organized. This organization here, the NAACP, over 100 years ago, was fighting and still is fighting against sexism, racism, discrimination, retaliation, you know, poverty, housing, lack of care, lack of health care. 
criminal injustices are still fighting those things, but they cannot do it alone. And that's the reason why we're here today. We're not here just to say, I would like to see these things happen. It's great to be empowered and feel good and feel great when you leave here, but the real work starts when we leave here. The real work starts when you are sitting in a building or an office and you see someone you know being discriminated against. Or what if it's you? The real work starts when you are hurt and feeling sad because you need that job to pay your bills, but you realize that people are mistreating you and treating you differently than they are your white male counterparts. That's when the real work starts. The real work starts when you realize you were hired at 61 cents to the dollar that your white male was hired for. That's when the real work starts. The real work, it doesn't mean you have to go on your job and make a big fuss. What it does is you come and you join an organization like the NAACP and you fight together. You can't fight isolated, you can't fight individually, but together we can win. Together, ladies, as we develop, grow, help one another develop and grow in entrepreneurship. I have entrepreneurship experience. I heard the lady just say entrepreneurship. If someone has mental illness experience, you go in and you help and you develop that person and introduce them to people. There are powers that we have, and that is one, the power of partnership. Power of partnership is collaborating. My husband and I, as, as the bio says, grew a business from $21 to $2 million. It wasn't because we were so great and so wonderful. It was because we knew that we had to do something for our kids. We both lost our six-figure jobs, and we weren't able to take care of our children. Our lights was cut off. We couldn't get unemployment. Uh, excuse me, we couldn't get food stamps or anything for our food because unemployment, you make more than a medium income which is not really much if you've ever been on unemployment. It's about $23,000 a year. So if you have a family that you need to feed, you don't know what else to do, you go into what's in your hand. So what's in your hand, ladies? What was in my hand was $21, a broom, a mop, a dustpan, and some people that I knew that needed some work done. So there are opportunities out there for us but we have to be strategic and intentional about the work that we do. We have to be strategic and intentional, intentional about what we want out of life, the goals that we set. Set goals and set them high. If you, if you aim low, you're gonna get low goals. You're gonna, you're gonna achieve low, but if you go high, you will achieve high. And Don't ever give up on your dream. Stay committed to the task. Again, obstacles will come. Challenges will come, people will be for you, and people will be against you. But you have, to be, you have to be able to stand on your own convictions and your own beliefs. If you believe in the power of the NAACP, if you believe that women of color need more advocacy, then stand for that and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So the hope is that as we come together as women, in the WIN program, we see people in, in Boston, Miss uh, Congresswoman, elect, Congresswoman elect Ayanna Presley, we see her grow a grassroot um, campaign. And people are still wondering how did she win? People are wondering how did she beat out a, over, he's been in, in the campaign for over 20 years, how did she beat him? And people are wondering how so many people in Boston are winning. And then I look at the South Shore and I'm wondering what is going on here. We have the same power. We have the same opportunity. We have to come together. We have to come together and let people know that we are powerful women. Powerful women in the uh, NAACP. And Ayanna Presley said something that I won't forget. And that is those who are closer to the pain should be closer to the, closest to the power. And many of us have been close to the pain, so we understand it when people are, are on the streets because they don't have jobs. We understand it when people are homeless. We understand it when women are working two or three jobs to take care of their families because it's just them in the household. We get it and we understand it. And some of us have lived it. And because of that, 
that is the reason why we need more women to help us win. Thank you. I think, Ms. Courtney, am I asking questions, answering questions? Courtney? I mean, yeah, oh, okay. Her, yeah, you can speak about your book. I know you mentioned your book. Mm -hmm. I do have my book, yes. Any questions for me? Yes. I have a question. Um, Taisha, so um, the business um, that you have, um, who, how would you say you were able to get that started? Who were some of the... Um, people in your life that were able to kind of help you get that business going and get it started? Okay, so when we started our business, I didn't know anyone, any entrepreneurs. Um, so we started our business with the $21 by looking in our sphere of influence. So looking in your sphere of influence, you may know someone that has an opportunity. It wasn't the opportunity that I was looking for because I went from six figures uh, working a job and making six figures to clean and dirty toilets. It's not something that you would die for, die to do, trust me. Um, but because of the sacrifice we were willing to make for our kids, our first income check was $250. But because that opportunity was there, we found out ways that we can do more with the actual people we were working with. So with the people we were working with, we found out, we asked questions. What else are you doing? What else are you offering? What else do you have for us? We asked those questions and we found out ways that we could be of support to them. See, most people are not gonna give you an opportunity unless you're doing something that's gonna benefit them and that's gonna support them. They had a lot of properties to get done and not enough people to do them. Fannie Mae told us we would have seven projects our first month and we ended up with 52 projects that first month. So we went from making uh, two separate six-figure incomes to making over $500,000 our first year in business. Any more questions? I don't know. Yes. Um, who would you say your role models are? I have several role models, but I would say my first role, role model has to be my grandmother. My grandmother took care of me my daughter, my mom had me at 16. She's definitely my role model. Um, and being able to take care, of, as grandmothers do, mm -hmm. take care of um, her grandchildren. She's definitely my role model. And my grandfather taught me how to have a voice. Some people say he, they wish they, he didn't. Um, <laughs> um, and they'll say, oh, what did, she, what did he do to her? But he taught me how to how, have a voice. And he would always say, speak up. Speak up. Don't let anything just happen to you. Don't let anybody just say anything to you. And so I learned that from him on how to, you know, have my voice. And they are definitely my mentors. Anybody else? No? Okay. Thank you. Can we get another hand for Taisha Crazy? All right, ladies, you heard her speak. She was great. Membership. <laughs> I have the forms over here for you. <laughs> we hope, seriously, we hope that you would join our organization. Not only do we have the WIND Committee, but we have other things going on right now. Next week alone, we have six events. I don't know if any of you have kids, but we have a STEM event coming up on October 23rd and 24th. On Tuesday, it's for kids kindergarten through fifth grade. You're gonna have all kinds of activities here. They're even gonna have bugs here, ooh, yeah. And then on, on Wednesday night, they're gonna have another STEM part two for grades six through senior years. We have like 50 exhibitors, CVS, Black Girls Code, just to name a few. So um, you should come, it's a family night because STEM is the way, science, technology, engineering, and math, 
That is the way of the world, and we hope you guys will come out and join us. On Thursday, we have a program at St. Mariah Baptist Church from Rashawn Hall. He's going to come and talk about the DA, because the DA is very powerful, a very powerful individual, and some people don't even know what the DA does. So the uh, event on Thursday, he's going to tell us exactly what the DA does. We actually tried to get a debate between DA, DA Cruz and John Bradley. One half said yes, the other half said no. So I guess we're not going to have a debate. But we did get a chance to have each of them on our BCA forum. We had Bradley on, I think, October 10th, and I think DA Cruz is coming on on um, uh, the 24th. I even got a call from the uh, trial district court. Um, Judge Bernard wants to have a round table with peop um, leaders in the community to ask us, um, do you think people of color are being treated unfairly when it comes to the court? You think? So <laughs> I would definitely be at that meeting on, I think that's on Tuesday. And what else am I missing here? Is that 16s we're having? Oh, we also got an opportunity, an invitation to speak at Bridgewater State College on advocacy and activism. And that is Thursday as well. So this is a few things that the branch is doing. And there's many more down the pike. So if you want to be involved, please. I have applications there. But right now, Taisha, come back up to the stage, girl. We're going to give you a little something. <laughs> Courtney was wonderful, wasn't she? Is she a great chair? <laughs> Courtney, please present to Miss Taisha. Oh, a little you. token of our gratitude. And thank you for speaking. It was lovely. I was thank so you. moved. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And Taisha is almost a member. Yeah. <laughs> I have to write the check. There you go. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but she's, she's almost a member. So, guys, please, applications. Enjoy the food. Conversate with Taisha. She has a book on sale for you, and please buy it because it's a good book. Thank you.